this is the only guide you need if you want to wear feminine clothes. Because we've all been there, that frustrating moment when you're excited to wear a new outfit, but then it doesn't look good on you. In this video, I'm going to be reporting my scientific research that will unlock your full bussy potential. Quick disclaimer, this is all subjective. I'm not a professional, but I spent some time researching it, and I see a lot of people making the same mistakes I do. Wear whatever you want, I don't care. But your quality, quality, your quality of life could be better if you look good. The guidelines I mentioned are just suggestions based on what people think look good. Lots of the info I quote will be from the website linked in the description. All revenue of this channel goes to charity, so if it helped out, leave a like. The first thing you need to know is your body shape. There's basically five different body shapes. Rectangle, apple, hourglass, oval, and the inverted triangle. We're gonna be focusing on this one. This body shape has noticeably wider shoulders than hips. Shoulders might be flat, square, or a bit muscly. Chest or bust can be on the bigger size. Little to no waist definition. Hips look straight. Bottom or your bussy is small. Probably great legs and a good attitude. The clothing goal is to balance your broad shoulders with your narrow lower body. We can achieve this by choosing clothes that add curves to your hips and bottom so that it creates a more defined waist which will de-emphasize your upper body. Starting with the neckline. To start, the neckline should not emphasize your shoulders. Off the shoulder tops are bad because it shows off your shoulders too much. A simple scoop is my favorite because it hides your shoulders. These are some other neckline styles that are more likely to work for you. Please avoid off the shoulder stuff and square neckline. Sometimes you can't break the rules and wear a square neckline if you get the other things right. If you have small booba like me, avoid cleavage tops. Personally, I think asymmetric stuff is weird and I hate showing off my chest. So I would avoid deep v-necks and deep scoops, but maybe it works for you. Just like your neckline, sleeves should not make your upper body look bigger. The easiest option to wear is a fitted short sleeve shirt. Watch out for shirts that are too boxy like this one, and this is really common with men's shirts. If you want to wear straps, do wide straps instead of spaghetti straps. Most important thing is to avoid any extra stuff on your shoulders, like poof. For short sleeves, just do something simple and fitted. For long sleeves, you don't want to do fitted. Instead, do like wide sleeves leaves which a lot of dresses and blouses already come like that these will be your best options if it's short sleeve get fitted if it's long sleeve get something wide and loose just as a side note i would avoid doing a wide long sleeve if you're also wearing wide leg pants in some cases that could work but that can look weird. For shirts, remember that we want to de-emphasize your shoulders and add a waistline. Women's fitted shirts can add curves to clothing. Men's shirts are bad because they hide any curves. They just make your body look straight. Avoid crop tops and shirts that have too much detail on the top half. And by the way, darker color tops are going to be easier and nicer to wear. So these are your best options when it comes to tops. So basically, a fitted top. For sweaters and jackets, avoid anything that has too much detail or emphasis on your top half. With jackets specifically, you want to create a waistline that flares outwards. If you haven't noticed, we want our clothes to hide our shoulders and add a waistline. Here are some jackets you could probably wear. Just make sure that what you wear matches the occasion, season, or time of day. And now, <laughs> bottoms. Here's the biggest clothing sin that all inverted triangle people do. Skinny jeans. But do you know why? Because we have no hips or butt. So that just means the opposite is better. Pants should add curves to your hips and bottom or waist. A perfect way to draw attention away from your shoulders is by wearing bottoms that include a high waist, bright or light colors, details around the hip, bottom, thigh area, wide-legged, loose, or flared out designs. Basically, black and skinny is bad. That's gonna be so bad out of context. Literally, everything else is good. Skinny jeans get no pockets, but we can have all the pockets in the world. And patterns. Here's some options that will probably work for you. And now it's time for everyone's favorites. Skirts. Just like bottoms, high-waisted with color and patterns are great. Since we have no hips, avoid tight, narrow skirts. Just like pants, we could wear any skirt that is not black and skinny. Literally, most skirts are fine because they just flare outwards. And some of them are high-waisted as well. Personally, I'm in love with a high-waisted midi skirt because I can wear them in a family setting or in a cute, simple date. For shorts, you want to follow a similar pattern to skirts. Some great styles are baggy, wide, or high-waisted. Avoid small, plain, tight-fitted shorts. Here are some great choices to pick from that will give you a waist. Just remember that your clothes need to make you look like you have a waist. Black is something you want to avoid for your bottom because it's going to hide and make everything look smaller. 
For dresses, we will combine everything that I just said. Everything. Avoid skinny, spaghetti strapped, narrow dresses. Look for dresses that have a flared waist. Details, patterns of the lower half will be better than a plain skinny one. Avoid any short sleeve shoulder poofs and try to follow the neck guideline. However, I think you can get away with a square neckline in this dress because the dress has more intention everywhere else. You can wear a strapless dress too if you follow the rest of the guidelines like a flare bottom half, details on the lower half, patterns or light colors that match the season, or in a belted nipped waist. These are weird diagrams that have the correct names but the art looks kind of bad. It's summer right now so the meta is to wear like a spaghetti strap dress which I can't do because it doesn't look good. So a workaround is to wear like a dark cardigan or a sweater over the dress. It's also been a cold summer so dresses are kind of out of the picture. It's <laughs> super weird. Follow these basic guidelines. I'm sure your quality Quality of life will be better. I love sharing my outfit ideas on Discord. I post them on my Twitter too, but it's 18 plus only, but mostly on my Discord. If you find this video to be helpful, share this to somebody who has horrible clothing taste. People that are new to being trans or new to cross-dressing or fanboy stuff often make all of these mistakes. And if you want to see more hot people in the world, it benefits you to share this video. The next video I want to do is like choosing the best clothing colors that match your skin tone because apparently your like cheek color, your wrist vein color, your eye color, hair color, skin color, and then your undertones all affect on what colors look good on you. And if you made it this far to the video, type femboy milk in the comments so then people can be worded out. Do it. <laughs> and lastly, a lot of you guys haven't seen me without my wig. This is like my actual hair. I'm not even wearing makeup either. So I don't know, it's kind of vulnerable or something. But if anybody noticed, that's cool. That's pretty much it. If this video helped you out, feel free to leave a like and share it with someone. See ya.